Hi, I'm Janelle Riley, Variety's Deputy Awards and Feature Editor, and I'm so thrilled to be here today to speak with some of the incredible cast from the drama series 1923. Uh, we have so much to discuss, so please join me in welcoming our guests. We have Amina Nieves, who plays T. Ona Rainwater, Jennifer Ely, who plays Sister Mary, Sebastian Roche, who plays Father Renault, and Lena Robinson, who plays Babakti. Thank you all so much for being here and congratulations on a great first season, um, continuing the tale of the Dutton family as seen in Yellowstone in 1883. Um, like those shows, 1923 was created, produced, and written by Taylor Sheridan, who is such an amazing storyteller. I'm curious for each of you, how did the project come to your way and what was it about your character or the story that made you want to be a part of 1923? And let's start with Amina. Uh, I think the project came in the beautiful way that it always does in this world that we live in as actors. Um, but, you know, the first time I read the script, I was just kind of blown away with the um, authenticity and not that he wasn't shying away from, you know, what Native peoples have, have gone through. Uh, so I was immediately drawn to it and also scared at the same time for obvious reasons you know you're uprooting all of this trauma and you want to make sure you honor everyone correctly and yourself and your family and um but we're here and I'm I I am like with all these beautiful faces that you see on the screen and we're doing it and it's an honor and yeah did I answer the question yes <laughs> And I heard that even just for the audition, you actually learned Crow just for the audition. Why was it so important that you speak the language fluently before even getting the part? Well, indigenous languages, especially in Turtle Island, um, they're, they become kind of non-existent in a sense. I mean, so many have become unremembered um, because of assimilation, because of forced assimilation. So being able to speak a native language, which Crow actually, I think um, they have the highest population of native, native speakers, which is about 80%. Um, to be able to speak a native language is extremely important, especially for our youth to continue that, that desire and curiosity to hold on to, to your culture and to your people. And also I believe to the land because the land sings with you and um, it's just, it's very important to, to remember everything, to uproot everything and to continue on with your stories as, as Indigenous peoples. And Lena, for you, can you talk about how the project came your way? Um, well, like Amina said, like any, how, how every actor kind of gets auditions these days, it's just kind of like through agents or managers. But when I first read it, I was, kind of in the same boat as Amina of like oh my god this is this isn't just like a watered down version of these schools they were like it it was this you know like um I, I guess I could say like a culmination of like all of my trauma <laughs> which was scary it was really scary but in that sense it was more powerful to be able to portray this young woman and to you know, be able to tell this story and um, yeah, in terms of learning Crow, it was hard, <laughs> especially when, you know, we only had the written version and then an audio thing. So it was like going back and forth between like, is this what they said? I don't know if this is what they said. And then for the audition process, like with, you know, meeting Taylor and stuff it was even more scary because you're doing it in front of the guy who wrote the show um <laughs> but on set yeah we had some of the best teachers so yeah and Sebastian for you what interested you in this project well first and foremost I, I I'd watched everything that Taylor Sheridan had done from Sicario to Helen High Water to Wind River to the whole of Yellowstone and I, I think I willed this project. Um, I, I willed it, you know, absolutely, because I, I really wanted to be part of his universe. And uh, I'd auditioned for another character. It hadn't worked out. And Father Renault, you know, landed on my lap. And, you know, even though the 
the character is controversial and and extremely uh, uh, extremely violent and borderline psychopathic. It was a character that was extremely well written. And uh, eventually, you know, the audition came to me. I put it on tape, sent it, and it worked out. And I, as I was doing it, I felt that it had worked out. You know, sometimes you feel that the the role sort of sticks to you. The writing is so brilliant that it it just felt right, even though the the content was so severe. Um, but yeah, that's that's how I did it. Um, but I willed myself onto that project. <laughs> I truly believe that, you know the. <laughs> And, you know, then I started working with these extraordinary people, which was really a blessing, truly a blessing. I love that you were a fan of the Taylor Sheridan cinematic universe. coming yeah. in. <laughs> That's amazing. I mean, Sicario, when I saw Sicario, I thought to myself, because I really am, uh, writing is incredibly important to me. I thought, who wrote this extraordinary piece of, of fiction? And uh, then I went on to become a fan, and then I saw that he had his own, you know, Yellowstone universe, and and loved it. But 1923 has a, a scope that is beyond that. It's it's it, it's there's a sort of Hemingway quality to to the project. So it, it it made it all the more worthwhile to be part of this. And and you know the people involved in it were extraordinary. So yeah, it was it was truly wonderful to be a part of it. And Jennifer, for you, were you a fan of uh, Taylor's work coming into this? I, I, I knew I, on, I did not know about, <laughs> um, but I uh, read the I, I put myself on tape for it. I read the sides, and um, I was like, "Yeah, no, I, I'd like to do this for an afternoon," and um, so I. So I did, and it was so much fun. It was so much fun to delve into her and to um, and that language, like Sebastian said, is the language is so, I don't know, it's theatrical and, um, but it's always the narrative is so strong and the characters, the stakes are so high, and it was uh, it was really fun. I just I, <laughs> I mean, I zoom pictures of it, but I put a um, I put a turtleneck on my head um, backwards, uh, like so that. And just like tie and tied it behind me with a scrunchie and um kind of tried to make myself look like a nun. And I just had a really wonderful time. Just uh I sometimes really love putting on myself on tape if if it's something you really want and that uh that's so it's just it can be so much fun just to play. It's kind of like, you know, playing like a kid and uh it can be quite liberating. And so it was really, it was really fun. It was really fun to do that. And um I was thrilled. I got it. Absolutely thrilled. And then I met Amina. And then, that was, you know, and then I met Lena. And then I met Sebastian. And it just got better and better. Yeah, I have to say it's really weirding me out seeing you all be so nice to each other. because <laughs> Your scenes together are, are so riveting and tense. <laughs> I mean, I'll speak for everyone. <laughs> Love runs so deep. And I think that's why it works because we all respect and honor one another so much. Mm. And we give, e we give each other the tenderness and, and the safety that was needed to, to do this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I couldn't have done, I, I cannot imagine what it would have been like if I hadn't um, had the gift of working opposite somebody who uh, was okay with us going there and um, had, and felt that it was important to, to do this. I, I can't quite imagine. It certainly would have been different. I mean, we would have done it, but it would have been, it would have been um, very, very different, but uh you know, Amina and Lena both are so, um, it's clearly so important to both of you and you're both such extraordinary actors. And it was, it was really exciting to work with them. Yeah, I concur. It really was, mm. it really was an extraordinary experience because, you know, we come in, you know, from the outside in and, you know, having done the research, the terrifying research on, on residential schools and of course, knowing, you know, the Native Americans' uh, uh, plight over hundreds of years, it was really, we, we, we had such an extraordinary communication with both actors. They were, they're such really brave 
and extraordinarily open actors and you know in scenes that are incredibly difficult to perform we're, not only that we're recreating history you know this is not gratuitous violence this is historical violence that we're recreating and i'm sure that it was extreme I, I can't speak for them but i'm sure that it was extremely difficult for them to go through that sort of recreating trauma and i have to admit that it was the relationships that we 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 had we were very very close i think you know even though we were performing we were recreating this trauma we were extremely close and 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 i listened you know i would listen and and see the bravery on, of their performances it was really riveting to watch it it was so seamless you know uh, to to work together because uh, i think that there was a heightened sense of sensitivity and and because of the material so yeah it was a rare rare experience really i'm so thankful for it and the story of the forced assimilation of indigenous people is is not one that's really been told very often on screen um i know you had two consultants uh mo brings plenty and birdie real bird who advised on the show um amina and lena can you talk about working with them and the research and prep you put into these roles i i don't know i'm embarrassed to say i i knew very little about this subject before watching this show and was, you know, shocked and appalled to, to realize how accurate it was. Um, no, don't, don't feel bad. You know, at least you're learning it now and it's, you know, you can't really change what happened. So don't feel bad at all. Um, working with Mo, it was like having my dad on set and I don't want to cry cause I always cry talking about it, but, um, episode five when we filmed my last scene um i remember going to set and i was like kind of like at that point of like i'm almost gonna cry because i know it's my last day on set and it's my last you know mm. but <laughs> i think immediately when i saw mo i gave him a hug and then just waterworks i was bawling my eyes out and yeah he was he was a rock he was the most supportive person ever i'm very lucky and grateful to be able to have met him and birdie and <laughs> when we were trying to learn crow birdie would say a word in crow and we'd say it exactly like how she said it and she'd go no it's this way and then change it on us <laughs> so that was a lot of fun <laughs> i really do miss them and you know it's I'm just very lucky and very, very happy to have experienced them. Yeah, I think for, I love you. I love you very much. And <laughs> I just want to ex yeah, expand on that too. I mean, Mo Brings Plenty and, and Brady Real Bird, they are, um, they're a dream team and a, a dream to work with because they're so particular and um, about getting it right and making sure that we're representing our communities to the T. And for me, that was just like a, I was so thankful because that was something I was really nervous about um, going into it. But when you meet them, it's like, oh my God, thank you. <laughs> it's like, they're just so meticulous and they were there every single day. They're there every single day that we were on set and they're praying and they're singing and they're right next to us when we get off uh, and just holding us down. And I think having that, having elders there with you, um, as well as everyone a part of the production, which were just love bugs and were very sensitive and tender to what we're moving through was a blessing. And Mo and Birdie made sure to hold that space and to hold everyone accountable to you on set. Um, so I give so much thanks to them and I'm so grateful to the, to the two of them. I really want to talk about the friendship between your characters because it's, it's sort of this ray of light through some of these really difficult scenes. Um, why was it important to show that friendship and how much did that sort of mirror how you felt about each other off screen? <laughs> With, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's important. <laughs> I think, you know, when you go to when when we were forced to go when you know our communities were forced to go to these governmental schools 
I think right from the very moment they're stripped of their childhood. Um, so to be able to see these subtle sweet moments of sisterhood and of family between Tiona and Babakti is extremely important because so many of our elders here and who have passed don't remember a childhood. Um, so that that bit of sweetness definitely resonates on and off screen. I mean, this is my sister for life and no one can ever try to take her away from me because I will fight. This is like <laughs> my everything. And honestly, it was always you as Babakti, you know, I and I'm about to get emotional, but I couldn't have done any of this Lena without you and I mean that from the bottom of my heart I'm gonna cry <laughs> okay. I mean uh, when we shot that scene with Lena that fateful scene that I shot uh, uh, Amina was there on set all the way all the time uh, you know and she was so supportive they were like their, their sisters it's true it was really beautiful to watch the the, the incredible support the you know, it was it was really, really very touching and 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 you know a real lesson. I I, I found that quite beautiful actually. And we need to fight like it. sisters too. <laughs> <laughs> we need to fight like sisters. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, um, I d I didn't expect it at all. This was, it was, just everything that was I needed in this life. And like I remember when I first got it too. Like a day after, immediately I saw that she was calling me on Instagram, and then I pick up, and then she's like, "I can't use the vulgar words that she used, but she was very <laughs> happy that I was." <laughs> <laughs> and I think since like since day one, it's been attached at the hips, you know, running around on set wreaking havoc, and you know, I, I honestly would not change a single thing. And in terms of like the scenes that we were doing and, you know, just showing that kind of sisterhood, it's yes, it's like, yes, uh, Tiona is this unmovable force, you know, she will not be um, silenced or put into this box. And it's, but I think my character and her character is just, you can't do it alone. You know, you need to have that support and it's just so important that family is there and whatever it may be, it's it's there and it's so beautiful. And Sebastian and Jennifer, I've I've heard many actors say that when they're playing a character who might be viewed as villainous, um, they can't think of their characters as evil. They're complicated or, or misunderstood. Uh, how did you view your characters and, and is it a challenging headspace to be in doing those scenes? Um, go ahead, John. <laughs> well, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't, I probably shouldn't admit to this, but I don't really believe that you have to like your character or that you have to kind of, you know, I, I don't. Um, and I certainly don't like her. Uh, <laughs> and um I think if you're playing I mean she's uh it's it's complicated but I I think for this uh, it can be a lot of fun playing a, a a a baddie it can be it can be great fun you know some of the most fun and um this wasn't fun uh because it was based on um real trauma and real crimes and um uh you know, horrendous abuse that actually happened. And uh, so it, it wasn't fun, um, but, uh, but, uh, but I, no, I don't, I certainly don't, didn't find a way to, you know, to, to like, uh, to like her at all. Uh, I do recognize, I think it's beautifully written by Taylor that you do see that she is also um, uh, living in a, a you know, a system, a very abusive system. And um, obviously, arguably, they're all brainwashed. So, um, th but it's still, uh, I, I could, I still didn't forgive her and don't intend to try. Yeah. Mm. So it's, it's okay that I cheered when she gets killed. Yeah, yeah, same. <laughs> same. 
<laughs> it's so satisfying. <laughs> I myself struggled a lot with the uh, the character, you know, as 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 complex and you can find any complexity in a character. Uh, you struggle with, you know, when I read the script and I, I I started seeing what I was about to do, it was it was a real struggle. At first, you know, you want to to, to sort of build a character that's uh, enjoyable to you, but mirroring Jennifer, it's true. I, there was very little that I, you know, I've played. I've made a career playing bad guys uh, that were in the truly in the realm of fiction, you know. But this is we're recreating history, you know. It, it's hard to watch, but it's harder to ignore. It, it's 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 history that is very necessary. It's it's a story that is very necessary to be told, and you are the sort of instrument of of, of death. You're the instrument of torture. Um, yeah, it was hard to to wrap my head around it, and I sort of you know ask my forgiveness, you know, before, uh, every time before doing a scene and, and you know, before we did uh, the scene with with, uh, with um, Lena, I, I had a sudden surge of unbelievable emotion. I really, I don't think I could have done the scene if I hadn't asked forgiveness for, you know, before doing the scene, because I truly, I couldn't, I, I held it in. You, you, I don't know if you, you, you didn't see it, but I, I became unbelievably, you know, it's never happened to me before on, on a movie set, and I became unbelievably emotional. Not, you know, not to excuse anything, but uh, I needed to to excuse the character before I was about to do the scene because, you know, when you're recreating history, it is it is very traumatic, you know, especially when you have Mo brings plenty, Birdie, Lena, uh, Amina around and all these young women who are there it's 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 very it's a very very painful process so I, I you know I, I can't say I like the character I I'm I enjoy my relationship with my actors immensely I have I, I mean when I knew it was Jennifer Ely I was like oh my god I can't believe I'm actually I'm a mass huge fan of Jennifer's you know she's an extraordinary artist and and you know and I discovered you know it's so wonderful when you discover young actors who are extraordinary artists you know it's really beautiful and you know I love that as an older actor seeing you know um our future you know and uh, so in that respect I truly enjoyed you know working with them but it, you know it, yeah it's it's hard for me to to forgive my character still you know, he's still around, so, you know, uh, no spoilers, but, um, you know, yeah, it's, 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 it's the toughest character I've ever had to play um, by far. I, I heard that you would apologize preemptively to, to your cast members before shooting some scenes. Was it, was it every scene? No, not every scene. It was just that moment that was just so loaded. We knew, we all knew what was going to happen. And I think Lena as well, you know, it was, it was, not only was it difficult for Lena because it was, you know, she had so much joy working on the show, but it was her last day as well, you know, and, and it's an emotional thing when it's your last day as an actor. It, 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 you, you're leaving a family. And also, I mean, the, the, the subject matter was so painful, just so that, yeah, I, I had to burst the, my own abscess. I, Maybe it was a bit selfish of me, but I had to do, I don't know why, I just had to do it. I couldn't not do it. I had to clear the air and then we would, then we went on and it, and, and it worked, you know, I think it worked beautifully. And, and Lena did such an incredibly brave work. It's just so, yeah, it just, I, I was really in awe of both Amina and Lena, really, truly. And, you know, Jennifer and I agreed to that. You know, it was, it's really, it's wonderful. We're doing this, you know, not only because we're artists, but we're doing this for a reason. You know, it's, this will, you know, people will know about this, you know, like they knew, they, I suddenly realized what the Tulsa massacre was mm -hmm. by watching Watchmen, you know. They, so in a way, uh, our, our art form is, is informing people, you know, however many people, but it's, it's, I think it's an important, important thing to, to talk about, yeah. And Amina, your character goes through so much in the first season, but she never loses her resilience. Um, I'm curious about charting the emotional journey. Were you filming chronologically or at least chronologically by episode? Um, did you know from scene to scene sort of where she had to be? We were shooting in two episode, uh, I guess, uh, 
worlds. <laughs> so uh, it wasn't chronological to the scenes, but so we we're flipping between, I think we did a lot of uh, episode two, like the first week and then went back or no, we did episode, it was everywhere. Um, but so it was a lot of, um, I did have to take notes and make sure like, okay, uh, we're doing this today, but we're also going to you know, go into the the past in three weeks. So uh, it was a little difficult at times. Um, but honestly, I think because um, when you're doing something of this of this magnitude and you're doing it and you're telling a true story and you're there honoring your people and non-native peoples, not only in the Americas, but even beyond, um, I think that the moment you step on set and the moment you're you're met with action, you, you just you just go and I think everyone kind of flows through you at once and the moment you put yourself in in those shoes and I mean the sets too were incredible it was it was scary how good they were it was scary how transformative you it, it felt the the moment you stepped on set so uh, it was difficult yes and it was also not um in a sense uh accessing that emotion I guess it hurt to access it, but it kind of just came out. Like I had no choice. It just did. And Lena, I heard you were actually very protective of Amina on sets. Uh, I don't know if that was just something natural and instinctual or, you know, if you just were sort of looking out for her. Um, well, you know, it's hard when you see your sister kind of going through all of these like really, really kind of intense scenes and brutal scenes and um you know I think this is what my dad was saying my dad was saying it's good to do these kinds of things but it's also hard when the ancestors don't know telling a story from real you know mm -hmm. so it was it was hard because you know we'd be like okay I know this is fake I know this is like controlled environment but the screams don't sound fake. And to be doing that for eight, eight to 16 hours a day for filming, you know, it's, it does something to you. And um, I remember when we were doing the, um, the cafeteria scene and um, there was stunt nuns, <laughs> which is fun for me to say that. <laughs> um, but yeah, there was like nuns who were stunt women and, um, uh jennifer and carrie uh, o'malley who plays sister alice but there wasn't a lot of you know kind of rehearsal of you know who was going to do this who is going to do that pinning amina down it was just it was just so much and it all happened so fast and because it was just so chaotic and you know you couldn't hear cut so ben had yelled cut and then everybody was still on amina mm -hmm. you know and, and i I don't, if, I don't know if it was just me, but I could just tell like she wanted to get out. So, you know, I just immediately ran up and just started pulling nuns off of her. <laughs> but like I said, it's, it's, it's hard to see your sister going through that. It's hard to see, you know, somebody that you love. And like I said, like, I know it's pretend, but the ancestors and the energy doesn't sometimes get that. So. And your body doesn't always know the difference <laughs> putting it through trauma. Yeah. yeah. No, it's true. I, I that same scene because I was on the ground and Amina was on the table and there were, you know, nuns wailing on her and I and Amina and you were you're so extraordinary and the sound coming out of you and you're fighting and you you know I you're so it was so visceral the um the pain and the 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 trapped um and your head went back over the table and I my hand I put my hands out and like caught your head which is you know not what my nun would have done but yes no that was definitely that was and um and Lena was right there you know as soon as as soon as Ben said cut pulling pulling off nuns um it's true um I I think we can get into a little bit of spoiler territory because I feel like everyone has seen this show <laughs> um and obviously it's been picked up for a second season so I just sort of want to ask Amina and Sebastian um without giving anything away what what do you think is in store for your characters <laughs> after you Amina 
Oh, that Tiana is able to go back to her to her reservation, at least step a foot there, you know, because um, I think for her, when she does get away, I think that will just um, give her a little bit more. Uh, it'll help her not realize, but being able to go back to the res, even if it's just a pass through on the way to somewhere that is safer, um, I think is important because it gives her the opportunity to understand uh, how how strong she is and what she is actually doing uh, for herself, for her people and for the future of her community. Um, so I hope that happens. I don't know if it will, um, most likely will not, but I'm praying she at least gets to, you know, put a toe there for a second just for her own heart um you know there is like a little kiss there too which is interesting I was not keen on that boy kiss but Nona needs needs you know a a nice touch that doesn't want to hurt her anymore and I think that was very sweet who knows what's gonna happen I don't have spoilers I'm talking about my ass right now. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> <laughs> it's the same same with me i i have no idea i of course there are things that you think about and 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 uh i mean the one thing i would wish is for him to suddenly realize his mistake to suddenly see the light i don't think it's possible with that character because he's he's sort of a very extreme uh, he's not actually extreme. A lot of Catholic priests were like that. If you do your history, you know, if you look back, and we're not talking about only reservations, uh, reserva um, uh, schools. Uh, if you look back in history, Catholics have perpetrated the most horrifying things upon, you know, upon people, not only their own people, but, you know, in colonialism and in wanting to basically... Uh, uh, impose their religion on 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 people who didn't want to. Um, I have very strong opinions about that, but I'm not going to talk about them. The thing is, um, yeah, I I I, I do I, I don't want any salvation for his character. I want to see. I, I'm interested to see where his character is going to go, and if there will be a final confrontation with uh, Tiona, which I suspect. Um, I don't know, but you know, you never know with Taylor, actually, you, you never know, which is what makes his writing really interesting. But I would love for him to see suddenly, yeah, to see the light, even though, you know, he can stay as, 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 uh, as abominable as he has been, but it would be interesting for him to go, I was wrong, you know, um, that's all, that's, a character thing that would be interesting to me, but I have no idea either. I'm I'm on my way. We're, we're going to be on the train, I think, and I we're going after Tiona, the formidable Tiona, who's been you know, extremely formidable. Yeah. Well, I can't wait to see what's next. I want to thank you all again so much for joining us today, and remind everyone that 1923 is available to binge exclusively on Paramount Plus. Thank you so so much for being. Thank here. you so much. Thank, thank you. you. So much.